Cryptocurrency investors are dealing with a huge drop in value that happened not very long ago. And as a result, people have also stopped trading NFTs as aggressively. In the midst of all this, Lisa Ray, an actress with over 30 movies and shows under her belt, decided to co-create a platform for artists working in the NFT space. Hey everyone, my name is Ishan, this is Gadgets360 and in this video, we chat with Lisa Ray about NFTs, blockchain technology, crypto and her new venture. So, let's get started. So, from an established actor to an entrepreneur that too in the NFT space, how did that happen? Well, you know what? In a strange way, it's not been actually such a surprising leap, especially for the people who know me well. The seeds were planted many, many years ago. So I have always had a huge passion for the arts, particularly the arts in India. Emerging, established, you know, didn't matter even the kind of artistic expression. So to give you context, I bought my first piece of art with my first modeling paycheck back in 1992. And that was in Mumbai. And so my passion has continued in parallel with, you might say, my public profession, which, to be honest, I never associated with. So I had always thought in the back of my mind that at some point I'm going to expand in two directions. I'm going to become a writer and I'm going to do something within the arts, but more from behind the scenes where it's supporting artistic expression, where it's, you know, providing a platform for artists to be able to not just express themselves, but earn also a decent income as well. Because we all know that for some reason we have this perception that, you know, the starving artist and we romanticize that, but that's not the case. Artists should also be earning their worth. Right. Okay. So how did you get the idea to make a platform like the Upside Space? So I give full credit to my co-founder, Aisha Khan, and she is based in Singapore. So we actually met in Singapore at the beginning of the pandemic. We had dinner once and then we were not allowed to meet after that. <laughs> at the beginning of this year, my family and I were moving from Mumbai to Dubai. And she circled back and she got in contact with me and she said, you know what, we've been through so much, especially through the pandemic. And two things have come out of this as far as she was concerned. And we, co we connected obviously in our passion for the arts as well but also having a global perspective. She said, number one, we realize the need for beauty in our life. You know, beauty is not optional. I think in, in terms of feeding our soul and our perspective, beauty is a necessity. So that's for the arts. And the second thing though, is that a lot of our life had actually gone online, right? We had migrated online. Even traditional art galleries, for instance, had to do online viewing rules. We were on constant Zoom calls. And <clears throat> of course, that was an extreme. And I don't think that any of us want to live exactly like that. I don't want to live like that. However, if you look at it, now that we have a little bit of distance, we can see where the technology can be an, an enabler, where it's useful. Uh, where it can be used to actually address problems in old systems, improve those systems, and even co-create a new ecosystem as well. So that's a really cool thing. So she said, look, we have a passion for the arts. We know that uh, artistic expression from Southeast Asia, South Asia, the Middle East, obviously including India and that, there are obstacles for a lot of artists to get their voices heard to tell their stories, to share it on a wider platform and with a global audience. And suddenly this incredible technology has come along, this disruptive technology called NFTs that a lot of people still don't completely understand. Um, but here's my take on NFTs. Um, I'm not a tech-based person. I don't pretend to be. I'm an art person, I'm a creative person. But tech, is an incredible enabler. If you know what you want it to do, if you direct it. I call NFTs, you know what I call it? Doorknob technology. Why? Because it opens so many doors, right? The doors and the potential and the opportunities that you can open through actually mindfully marrying technology and art are almost limitless. And that's even why we, we say that we are curating limitless possibilities. However, in this space, and helping to enable and educate also artists 
um, to be able to thoughtfully create in the space in addition to what they're doing in the real life, in their studio practice, but also for collectors to start embracing this new medium of exchanging art, of holding art, of buying art, of showing art, because this is the next evolution in art. You know, like it, there, there's always an evolution. There's nothing to be afraid of. I always encourage people, just educate yourself before you take a decision. So, you know, we see it as our mission also to educate to, you know, um, to help people to understand the possibilities, artists and collectors. Uh, I'm not trying to convert anyone because, look, physical art will remain. I have collected physical art for many years, but the two will beautifully coexist and can actually, again, uh, kind of cross-pollinate and work hand in hand. That's it. Yeah. And so is like the U.S. already uh, like also trying to educate people on NFTs? As much as possible. We do, um, <clears throat> even before launching, because we're actually only a few weeks into mm. launch. Uh, we were doing a lot of Instagram lives, a lot of Twitter lives. You know, if you look at our social medias, a lot of it in the beginning was really about education. What is an NFT? What can it do for me? Why is it important to create a new creative ecosystem? What does that mean? Da, 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 da. So, you know, as much as I can educate people and go out there, I'll keep banging the drum. Um, so that, again, we should be well-educated, uh, particularly in India, where we're often very good at adopting and adapting new technologies and using that to address sometimes a broken system in many ways, like some of the systems don't quite work, let's face it. So technology is brilliant for doing that, and we in India are brilliant at using it to do that. Right. So. Uh how does the U.S. differentiate itself from the likes of OpenSea? Well, a lot of ways. So if you say OpenSea is the Amazon for art, we're kind of like either you could say the Netflix slash movie. Okay, so first of all, we're curated. We're curated. We work hand in hand with curators. They are our partners. So as opposed to OpenSea where artists can, you know, um, actually uh, upload themselves directly onto OpenSea and they're responsible for their own marketing. We work in a curator format. So a curator from any of these regions goes out, finds the artist, creates a curatorial theme, just like you would in a gallery setting here. Okay. And it needs, you know, a little bit of um, handholding. Also for an audience to understand what am I looking at? What is the story about? Is this a good artist? Is this an artist I should think about following their career and supporting and things like that? And that's where the curator comes in. The curator is the expert who's handpicking artists on the basis of their talent or their potential or, be, you know, because it fits into a theme, it reflects a region. So that's a big differentiator from OpenSea. Plus, we really, I mean, I feel very passionate, passionately about this. We actually care about everyone in our ecosystem that we're creating. So as I said to you we've thought it through if an artist doesn't have the skills or feels intimidated about stepping into the nft space we as a platform will help to do that we can offer that service and then for the collector you know for the collector who doesn't know anything about this space or doesn't want to spend hours you know figuring out how do i make a wallet how do i do this how do i do that we've tried to make it as seamless and frictionless an experience because i know myself if something doesn't happen you know, you're trying to purchase something immediately, I just switch off and I go on to the next thing. So we want to, it's not about our, our collectors or the art curious getting tied up with the technicalities of the technology. It's about the art. We want to have them access the art. So, you know, signing up is as simple as signing up for an Amazon account. You can pay with your credit card. You can pay with fiat currency. You can pay with cryptocurrency. So we've tried to make it as seamless as possible. And look, we're, we're constantly iterating and we actually welcome feedback because that's the nice thing about the Web3 community. It's very collaborative, right? It is about building community. And that's also what they're in the process of doing is really trying to build a solid community. Right. Okay. So you, uh, like digitalization is definitely required in every field, right? But uh, like, do you think projects like OpenSea or even TUS are promoting NFTs over the physical art pieces? Mm -hmm. Do you think? That's, I mean, that's a great question, but my question is not at all. No. 
No, not at all. I mean, first of all, as an example on um, TUS, on the upside space, in some situations, um, it's up to the artist, but they offer the physical piece free along with the digital piece so that you can have that experience, right? This in no way, this art NFT movement, in no way is meant to negate or overshadow necessarily, you know, uh, physical art. However, there are certain problems within, as I said, the traditional art world that the digital art world can help artists overcome. Also access, right? A global audience, you know, dissolving geography and problematic geography. How does a Pakistani artist get his work you know, bought and seen and supported in India and vice versa. Artists should not actually be, you know, beholden to these kinds of political intricacies, but we are, you know, that's the world we live in. So this leapfrogs over that. Plus, I mean, there's a lot that goes into putting together a, you know, a physical kind of presentation and there's a certain expense, which you don't have in the digital space. And I want to give you a quick example. We had a digital, physical and digital presentation. That word. Yeah, it's the new word. It is going to enter the official, you know, kind of idioms and dictionaries very soon. And that's what we're doing here. This is actually a digital presentation. So you have screens, you know, that, that presenting and you have the physical and that is the point. They marry together beautifully. Whereas going back to, we did a um, pre-launch presentation in Colombo. So I went there and it's not a very tech forward country, True. you know, yeah. India is more tech forward than yeah. Sri Lanka. Sri yeah. Lanka, it's, it was a sophisticated crowd, but if you're not used to using QR codes every day, then you're like, what do I do with this? You exactly. Know? Yeah. Anyway, so being in Sri Lanka, I didn't expect to also necessarily sell a lot of pieces and we actually sold three quarters of our pieces. And it was an education for me as well as the artists that like, look, if you actually choose to have a practice, a digital practice, an NFT practice, you can actually still earn an income even when local circumstances are very volatile, you know, and when you can't earn local income or your local currency is like going down the drain. So I felt that that was a very political statement. And that was really like opened my eyes again to the possibilities of what e NFTs can, um, can accomplish. You decided to launch TUS in December last year when the overall crypto market and NFT sector was undergoing record lows. What nudged you to go for it then? So first of all, because we're not chasing a trend, it was irrelevant. We have a sustainable long-term business model. And as I said, it's about delivering a great product, the art, to a vast, as vast an audience as possible. Um, so we were very clear about our values and our business model. So one blip in the system right now where the crypto market was doing a correction was in the middle and we're still in a bit of a crypto winter actually works to our advantage because, you know, we started out NFTs with very, as I said before, sensational headlines and a lot of noise. And I'm so happy that the noise is dying down. And this allows our voice to be heard and also for quality to rise to the surface. Okay. The Upside Space will be helping out local artists from the South Asia and Middle East. What do you think are the top three countries from these nations? Art from where could impress international buyers the most? Mm. That's a that's a very tricky question. You're actually painting me into a corner. <laughs> I'll tell you what, from, from the regions that we have curated from so far, I'll tell you where we've been getting a great reaction. Uh, India, yes. Bhutan. Bhutan is a very fresh market and there's actually some incredible young art that is not easy to access. And let's face it, not all of us have the time or the budget to go to Bhutan. So this is a wonderful way of discovering Bhutanese art. Um, and then, um, it's really hard to like pin it down. But um, I personally, I personally also like the um, selection from Pakistan as well. It's really strong. Yeah. 
it was definitely an interesting conversation that's it for today's video see you guys in the next one if you like this video please like and share it and for all things tech stay tuned to gadgets 360